Here are some examples where I have composition of functions. That means I have a function inside of another function. And we're particularly paying attention to inverse sine. Okay? In other videos, we will work with cosine and tangents. Inverse cosine and inverse co and inverse tangent. Okay, um, for this first example, we always work within the parentheses first and then we work outside the parentheses. So I usually try and figure out what this is first and I always like to label this as my angle, right? This is asking the cosine of this angle is equal to what? That's what it's saying. So first I have to find out what angle we're talking about here so then I can find the cosine of the angle. So let's do that. Remember, this whole thing inside the parentheses is your angle, which is what we're going to find. This is your theta. That's what we're going to find, this whole thing. Okay? Um, sine inverse of negative 1. Again, keep in mind that the inverse sine have valid values only from pi halves to negative pi halves. So first and fourth quadrant on the unit circle. Okay? Remember that. And also remember that these angles here, we do not use these values. We use an equivalent of their values so that they are within negative pi halves and pi halves. Remember, for 11 pi halves, we're going pi 6, we're going to use negative pi 6. For 7 pi fourths, we're going to use negative pi fourths. And for 5 pi thirds, we're going to use negative pi thirds. And for 3 pi halves, we're going to use negative pi halves. Okay? Just so that we stay within this range. First example. Inverse sine of negative 1. Inverse sine. So this is asking you the sine of what angle will give you negative 1. So automatically I know I'm looking for the y coordinate whose angle will give me negative 1. So let's look for that. Where do I get negative 1? Right here. Here it is. If I take the sine of 3 pi halves, I will get negative 1. So the answer to this would be 3 pi halves. But be careful. It's not 3 pi halves because 3 pi halves is not within the range that I'm permitted to be in, which is negative pi halves to pi halves. So I, use, I have to use the equivalent to that, which is negative pi halves. So this in here, I can rewrite as the cosine of negative pi halves because this piece here we have solved and we found that it was negative pi halves. So now I found the angle. Now I can find the cosine of this angle. Now when we're working with cosine, I'm not worried about uh, falling outside of this range because I'm done with inverse sine. Now I'm just using the normal cosine. So what is the cosine at negative pi halves? What this is asking you is what is your x coordinate when the angle is negative pi halves? So the x coordinate here is on the unit circle 0. So this will equal 0. So the answer to this composite function is 0. And you're done with that one. Let's look at the second one. Inverse sine of square root of 2 over 2. Remember, this whole thing is equivalent to an angle. And then I'll take the secant of that angle. Okay? So let's do that. Sine inverse of square root of 2 over 2. Where is your y coordinate? In quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, it's positive. So that means it's going to be in quadrant 1 because your y coordinate is a positive number. So where is that? That is at pi fourths. So this thing in here is the same thing as writing the secant of pi fourths because I evaluated this piece here and this was the answer to that piece and now I'll do the secant at pi fourths. And now let's See, what is secant? Remember, the secant is equal to 1 over cosine. So I can rewrite this as 1 
over the cosine of pi fourths. And that would equal to 1 over the cosine at pi fourths. We go to pi fourths and the cosine is your x coordinate. So this would be equal to 1 over square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to 2 over square root of 2. Okay? And now we rationalize, and when we rationalize, that means we multiply the numerator and the denominator by square root of 2 over 2, and that will equal square root of 2. So the answer to this problem here is square root of 2. Okay, we usually memorize the sine and the cosine for these special angles. You might also want to memorize the tangents, the secants, and the cosecants. If you don't memorize it like me, which I don't know, I have to calculate it each time. Okay, so it's square root of 2. Let's do the next example. For this next example, same thing. This piece in here is my angle. So let's figure what this angle is. This angle, it says that when I take the sine of whatever angle this is, I'll get negative square root of 3 over 2. So the sine is your y coordinate. It's saying it's a negative number. That means I'm going to be in quadrant 4 because in this quadrant is where my y values are negative. And this is a valid quadrant for inverse sine. Okay, I talk about this quadrant and not this one whose y coordinate is also negative because this quadrant does not belong in this range. Okay, so that's why I'm talking about this quadrant. So where, in what angle does this happen? It happens right here at 5 pi thirds. Notice my sine here is negative square root of 3 over 2. So my inverse sine of negative square root of 3 over 2 will equal 5 pi thirds. But remember, we cannot use 5 pi thirds. We have to use negative pi thirds because 5 pi thirds goes off of my range, way off, okay, and that part of the graph doesn't exist for inverse sine. So I'll use negative pi thirds. So this piece here becomes the tangent of negative pi thirds. And what is the tangent of negative pi thirds? Now remember, tangent is sine of the angle over cosine of the angle. So that means this is sine of negative pi thirds divided by cosine of negative pi thirds. What is the sine of negative pi thirds? The sine is the negative square root of 3 over 2. Negative square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of negative pi thirds is 1 half. Okay, and let me go down a little bit. Let me erase this. Let me write this over here so that I'll have space. Okay, and let me erase this here. Okay, so when I divide this by this, it is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of the denominator. There it is, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2 over 1. I can cross cancel 2 and 2, and this will equal square root of 3, negative. And it makes sense that the tangent is negative in this quadrant because cosine is positive and sine is negative. And a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So this equals negative square root of 3. Okay? That's the answer to this one. And for our last example here, notice I have the sine inverse outside of the function, outside of the parentheses in this case. Inside the parentheses, they're asking for the cosine of negative pi fourth. So for this, I don't have to worry about the restrictions, okay? I'll just find using the unit circle that I've memorized or looking at the unit circle, where is cosine of negative pi fourths? So let's locate negative pi fourths. 
negative pi fourths is right here. This is negative pi fourths right here. The cosine of that angle is the x coordinate of this angle. Okay, of these, uh, of this coordinate, the x coordinate corresponds to the cosine of the angle. So this piece here is square root of 2 over 2. So now this problem becomes the inverse sine of square root of 2 over 2. How much is that? Well, now they're asking you where will I, what angle do I take the sine of and get square root of 2 over 2? So I'm talking now about the y coordinate and I'm talking about a positive y value, right? So that can only happen on the first quadrant for inverse sine because for inverse sine we do have to pay attention to the range, okay? So I'm looking at first quadrant here for a positive value and that will happen at pi fourths. So the inverse sine of this value is pi fourths. And that tells you that when you take the sine of pi fourths, you will get this. Okay, so that equals pi fourths. And there you have your examples. I hope this helps you understand. It's a little bit tricky when you're using sine inverse. You have to pay attention to the range. And as you'll see in later examples with cosine and tangents, they have similar but different uh, restrictions that we're going to discuss. Uh, we will do another video on, our next video is going to be on the tangent function. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.